Hello everybody. From the subject of otorhinolaryngology, we will be discussing a pathology of the ear that is otosclerosis. We will be discussing it under the following headings. We will start with the basic definition and terminologies. We will do the risk factors and etiology, pathology, pipes, clinical presentation and treatment and differential diagnosis associated with it. Now let us start with the basic meaning of otosclerosis. Now otosclerosis as we already have a basic idea, it is something to do with bony uh, increase in bone formation around the uh, around the tympani, uh, around the stapedial foot plate however it is just one part of the entire spectrum of the disease the, it is also known as otospongiosis why we will we'll discuss it further uh, in our in our next headings uh, it is a spectrum and for to understand otosclerosis we need to know certain basic terminologies that is otic labyrinth periotic labyrinth otic capsule otic labyrinth is basically the membranous labyrinth the entire part uh, which uh, which and which encloses the endolip and the membranous labyrinth itself is called otic labyrinth. The periotic labyrinth is the space that surrounds the membranous labyrinth and it is uh, and it is uh, filled up by perilymph. The otic capsule is the bony part and hence it is covered by an endosteum and uh, endosteum internally and a periosteum externally. Internally, it contains bone as well as certain pockets of uh, cartilage that is that is known as the endochondral part. This enchondral part that is that refers to the pockets of cartilage that are present within the bony labyrinth might sometimes get ossified. On the basis of that, we refer to the we refer the disease as otosclerosis. If it occurs along, it, it occurs most commonly around the stapedial plate, and that will be the stapedial uh, otosclerosis, and then we'll come to the other parts. Now, etiology and risk factors. There is no strict etiology of the of otosclerosis. However, there are certain theories. Uh, the theories include localized venous congestion, osteogenesis imperfecta. Osteogenesis imperfecta because because it is bone formation, it is it is uh, it is related to the def uh, defect in the collagen called a call one a one gene, and hence it is closely related to osteogenesis imperfecta. It is also related to Page's disease associated with Page's disease, and it is uh, also as I said called one a one gene, and it is uh, it there are also enzymatic theories about it. It has uh, an association with pregnancy. And there are two specific uh, association, Van der Hoop syndrome and viral infection. Van der Hoop syndrome has three things, osteogenesis imperfecta, blue sclera and otosclerosis. And viral infection, there are theories that measles and, uh, measles and other viral infection can cause otosclerosis. Uh, it is associated with otosclerosis. Now coming to pathology. As we have already said, otosclerosis is a disease of bone formation. So that bone formation, if we look at histologically, it can be either active or it can be either inactive. What I mean by active is that the bone is progressively forming and it is progressively forming and increasing in size. And hence it is filled with blood vessels, with marrow spaces and, and it also has a blue, blue connective tissue matrix. And the inactive is mainly the mature part or it can be said as mature foci, mature foci, less vascularity and with mature bone formation and hence it is known as uh, ma ma mature foci, uh, mature foci, that is the pathology, the active part will rapidly and progressively spread and the inactive part will remain there, uh, the types, types as I said in the beginning of this discussion, there is a stapedial type where the, uh, where the foci of the ossification will be, uh, foci of uh, bone formation will be around the stapes. There will be a cochlear type where it will be around the cochlear region and there is a histologic type. Histologic type refers to microscopic foci of bone formation that is not clinically relevant. Cochlear will be because bone formation occurring in the uh, cartilaginous foci around the cochlea and hence it results in sensorineural type of deafness. Stapedial will always not um, most likely result in cochlear type of deafness however there are certain association that we will discuss later now the stapedial is in important because it is the most common type and it is most generally seen in patients stapedial for foci ossification can occur at five sites uh, if it occurs anteriorly there is a part known as fissula anti fenestra Anti means before, fenestrum means a window, that is before the oval window. If it occurs, uh, if the foci of uh, bone formation occurs above the, um, in anterior to the oval window, then it is known as an anterior foci. If it occurs posteriorly, then it is known as a posterior foci. If it occurs along the annular ligament, that means uh, uh, along the periphery, then it is known as circumferential type. 
if it occurs along the foot plate itself but it spares the uh, periphery then it is known as a biscuit tuck and if it occurs entirely obliterating everything and then it is known as obliterative tuck now coming back to our discussion as i said stepidium five types most commonly will be the anterior one then the cochlear one then the histologic one then uh, we come to the prevalence family history and associated risk factors typically the patient of otosclerosis is a female 20 to 40 years of age she will come with the complaints of conductive hearing deafness the conductive hearing loss and she will be most probably of caucasian race uh, however in india in the scenario of indians uh, male male uh, males are more likely to come with otosclerosis however in the world in globally females are more likely to suffer from otosclerosis uh, as i said 20 to 40 years of age there will be a there will be a hereditary transmission history of hereditary transmission about 50% of otosclerosis have a family history autosomal dominant in nature with incomplete penetrance and variable ex expressivity that is that we do not have a proper theory or data regarding the genetic history however there is an association with uh, of familial nature that way uh, and this is a disease which is exacerbated by sudden and severe physiological change in the body that means if there occurs any accident if there is any major trauma there is pregnancy or uh, or after menopause the disease might increase in its severity now prevalence 0.5 percent a male to female uh, sorry female to male uh, sex ratio is 2 is to 1 however in indians as i said male is more predominant perhaps due to increase uh, in, uh, increase in turnout of male rather than female and then we come to clinical presentation we'll discuss the clinical presentation in two headings symptoms and signs symptoms the patient will most com most commonly complain of hearing loss hearing loss as i said conductive for most commonly for stepidial sensory nuclear cochlear mixed uh, for if the stepidial uh, if the stepidial and progresses uh, towards the inner uh, ear or sometimes any other associated pathology there be a history, uh, there might be a history of tinnitus because there is an association of <coughs> cochlear type of otosclerosis with release of toxins and toxins are most common uh, toxins might uh, affect the outer hair cells and then it can result in tinnitus this, uh, because it is an inner ear pathology there might be associated with vertigo and there are two and there are two special uh, symptoms that that has to, uh, that, that, that are seen in otosclerosis that is a speech uh, that is a ch uh, change in speech and a, uh, and a type known as paraacusis willisi speech that means the patient will have, the patient will have a monotonous well modulated soft speech and paraacusis willisi means the patient says that he hears more accurately or more uh, he, see, um, uh, he or she hears better in noisy environment because the uh, person with he, uh, whom he or she uh, the patient is speaking will try to uh, increase the inten increase the intensity that means uh, to talk with a loud voice and hence uh, the patient hears more in noisy environment that is where i is really see again summarizing the symptoms there will be the most common and the most important is hearing loss which can be either conductive or sensory neural or mixed uh, tinnitus might be associated because of release of toxins in cochlear type vertigo may be associated because it is uh, because if inner ear is involved speech and paraacusis willisi are special symptoms of uh, otosclerosis special symptoms and uh, patient presentation signs if we look at the ear examination it should be normal However, in active type of disease, that means in increased proliferation, increased vascularity, there will be a sword sign. That means the promontory, if the promontory is involved, there will be increased redness and there will be a pinkish tint that can be observed from outside, uh, which is known as flamingo tint, that is known as sword sign. It is indicative of active disease. Uh, otherwise, it will be normal. And functional examination will see hearing loss. Uh, that, that can be elicited by tuning for test. Uh, investigation. On pure tone audiometry, we see a typical Carhartt's notch. What is Carhartt's notch? If we draw the PTA graph on the uh, of the bone conduction and air conduction, we'll see a we will see either conductive or mixed or sensory neural. However, if we see the bone conduction graph, we'll see a typical dip, a notch around say 2000 hertz. That means the bone conduction starts to uh, the threshold starts to increase it dips at the 2000 hertz and then it again uh, it again rises up upwards at the higher frequency this is known as car hertz notch this is how uh, <coughs> this is uh, that notch disappears after a su successful surgical operation uh, 
and the uh, and investigation there will be uh, we can do speech audiometry which will be almost uh, which will be uh, which will be normal there will be normal discrimination uh, where in those with uh, accepting those in cochlear involvement and if we do tympanometry uh, we will see a curve of ossicular stiffness that means because of the ossicular stiffness there will be a typical uh, curve may be seen uh, when the stapedial reflex is absent then the stapes is fixed now the differential diagnosis of otosclerosis are the causes of conductive deafness that means serous otitis media adhesive otitis media if there is sclerosis around the tympanic and uh, tympanic annulus if the uh, malleus is adhered if the malleus is adhered or fixed to the attic uh, if there is discontinuity in the ossicles that type of causes will resemble uh, deafness uh, of the uh, hearing loss of the otosclerosis however we will get other signs also in the specific diseases now the treatment treatment can be divided into three headings medical surgical and use of hearing aid medical there are no specific treatment there is some use of sodium fluoride that helps to prevent the progression of the active disease however it is not a treatment of otosclerosis per se it will not exactly treat it but it helps to decrease the progression medical treatment is for uh, to decrease the progression of the disease uh, if there is any car hard, uh, if there is any swatch sign present if there is any active disease that was noted then only it is used surgical of choice is stepetectomy or stepetotomy we will try to give broad headings of the surgery in this video however detailed discussion can be pursued further in uh, further videos hearing aid we will use when the patient is uh, patient doesn't want to undergo surgery or patient uh, uh, or there is uh, contraindications for surgery uh, there are historical surgeries also stapes mobilization and lampoids fenestration lampoids fenestration is making another fenestra uh, making another window along the protuberance in the mid along the protuberance in the medial wall of the lateral semicircular canal uh, in the medial wall of the tympanic cavity however this will not completely help in uh, treating the disease now stepidectomy or stepidotomy uh, we will discuss uh, indication, contraindication, steps and complication. Now indication of stepedectomy or stepedotomy is when there is at least a demonstrable hearing loss. That is it should be 30 decibel or worse. Only then we will uh, we'll proceed or we will think about doing stepedectomy. And there should be a conductive hearing loss because uh, if there is sensory neural involvement then stepedectomy will not help us and we will if they are if the bilaterally both ears are involved then we will do it in the worse ear so that the uh, so that the comparatively better ear is not involved in complications and other so and contraindication contraindication if if the other if the if only one ear is involved with autosclerosis and the other ear is a dead one then we will not try to do if there is associated mania disease uh, mania disease then we will not try to proceed further if the child is very young then we will not do because the stepedectomy involves putting a prosthesis and hence if we put a prosthesis in young children this might get displaced or this might get uh, this might get displaced because a young child is prone to have uh, acute uh, acute otitis media and increase in pressure might displace the prosthesis and this can lead to further complication that, that is why we will wait uh, professional athletes uh, high construction workers and others will try will not try to do because uh, sudden sudden better hearing might might uh, give them noise induced hearing loss and then for, or it might give them vertigo uh, or it might associate them with vertigo uh, and, and hence we will try to avoid them uh, the noisy and noisy surrounding similar cause because uh, sudden uh, sudden hearing benefit might induce noise uh, noise induced hearing loss in them and then if there is any other pathology associated with it like otitis external tympanic membrane perforation then we will try to delay the surgery before uh, and we will try to treat those uh, conditions first what are the steps of stepedectomy or stepedotomy? We will discuss it by looking at the images given in Hingra. Uh, the first image, as you can see here, they are trying to make an incision, uh, a tympano, a tympano metal flap. Uh, as it is say, 5 to 7 millimeter away. Uh, this flap is raised, and along with it, the tympanic membrane is also raised and put uh, and it is put literally. Because we because, uh, because of this incision from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. After that, we make a flap and we put it literally. Then we will see the internal structures. The structures include, you will see here the incus. This is the incus. You will see the stepes. You, the malleus is uh, the malleus is along the tympanic membrane. So it is, uh, it is occluded, occluded here. 
and you will see promontory you will see round window and other sorts for better observing the stepis foot plate and the promontory we will we will remove the posterior superior bony overhang that means we will try to remove this bony part bony outline so for better observation and then we will see the structures here as you can see the facial canal becomes uh, the, the facial canal becomes evident we can see corda tympani nerve and we have to be careful about the corda tympani nerve as well as the facial canal uh, to prevent any injuries we will see promontory we will see round window you will we will also see the incus properly as well as the incudostepidial joint and the stepis uh, stepis cruda and after further uh, operation after further proceeding along the steps we will see the stepis foot plate now our job is to remove the stepidial superstructure uh, super so how we will do that we will first we will cut the stepidial tendon to uh, to remove the uh, to firm, to remove the fix, uh, fixity of the stepis then we will make a hole in the stepido in uh, stepidial joint and then we will try to dis uh, dislodge the joint then we will ma make sure that the incus is not involved as well as the malleus by uh, ensuring their uh, uh, mobility then we will remove the super superstructure by this, uh, by cutting through the cutting through the two pleura. This is shown in the fourth image. As you can see, the stepis superstructure is removed. The incudo stepidial joint is uh, cut off. The uh, stepidius tendon is cut, and we can see the stepid stepis foot plate. This is the facial canal. This is the corda tympani nerve that is not touched. Now we can. Now our main job is to make a prosthesis that can insert through the because we are talking about making a hole this will be a stepidotomy operation which is more preferred than stepidectomy however we can do stepidectomy if the entire foot plate is involved now we will yeah, we will use a prosthesis and we will connect it to the incus and make a hole in the uh, foot plate of the stepis and this uh, the prosthesis will be connected to these two parts and it will move as the malleus and incus moves we can see it here this is the prosthesis. This prosthesis is generally made from Teflon. It can be amalgam. Uh, it can be uh, mixed with platinum or it can be mixed with plat titanium. There are uh, there are specific composition of making the prosthesis. And this prosthesis, as you can see, it is connected to the stepis foot plate as well as the incus. Uh, then we will see the bending sign. That means if we uh, uh, if we pu pu if we push the shaft of the prosthesis, then rather than getting displaced, it will just bend along the shaft. And we can see, uh, we can ensure the move, uh, maneuver move, mobility of the prosthesis by moving the malleus, and we'll ensure ensure that. Thus, after that, the the flap is again put back, and then the surgery is over, and we have to do the uh, procedures, the uh, further procedures. The stepid stepidotomy is generally done under. It can be done both under local anesthetic or general anesthetic. However, it is de it depends on the surgeon. Thus, we have discussed the stepidectomy or stepidotomy depending on the whether we remove the stepis foot plate or not and these are the things uh, we can yeah, these are the things discussed we can revise back otosclerosis the basic terminologies and definitions etiology risk factors pathology two types active inactive types the pedial cochlear histology the basic numerical data prevalence uh, sexual predisposition family history clinical presentation discussed under signs and symptoms we have the we have discussed a bit about the investigation the differential diagnosis the treatment divided into medical surgical and hearing aid of which surgical is of choice and specifically stepidectomy or stepidotomy this much for this discussion thank you